may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Welcome back to the channel, share, subscribe, like this video, make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. I was going to come back on last night, but there was no need to because it was not going to do anything in the daytime. They'll wait till night cover before they do anything. So, if nothing went across, now they said there were some strikes in Tehran. I'm not sure if there was or not. Uh, Al Turner was doing that, but he, like I said, he's not a big fan of Israel or the Jews. So, a lot of his stuff that was in his reports, I think, was false. So, uh, there was a part where it said that there was a there was Russian jets in Iraq. There was no confirmation of that or anything. So he said that American planes was threatened and we ran and was scared and there was nothing like that. He also acted like Iran wiped Israel off the earth. That is not the truth. Most of the earth bombs and everything was stopped before they hit Israel. With the combined help of the United States, the UK, Jordan and many others that helped in the fight, even the French. They brought down most of them. There was, the biggest hits was to a northern airport in which Israel will have to rebuild it. But besides that, from hearing some of these other people that are anti-Israel, you gotta be very careful. It's even hard for us to even use their news sometimes because we gotta go through it before we go through, you know, read it out to you guys. But these people want Israel to be eliminated off the earth, just like the Bible says. And these people will soon be in a lot of trouble when Jesus gets here. He's the king of all Jews. So if you have a problem with the Jews, boy, you don't want to meet the head one because he's coming. Now it says here, I ran ballistic missiles. And of course, it did something goofy. Where did it go? Where did it go? And of course, it... All right. I'll be back there in a minute. Okay, Iran ballistic missiles hit Israel uh, Raymond Air Base in Negev, received multiple hits. Israel's air defense, it says, failed, but actually it didn't. There was uh, probably over 300 and some uh, missiles between cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and uh, I can't remember how many drones, but there was quite a few. So their air defense actually held up. It was, they used the drones to, you know, basically run the missiles out of the Iron Dome system. That's what they did. So their air defense did not fail. It actually proved to the world you don't want to mess with Israel because they took down almost everything Iran had to throw at them. For the first time in history, Iran uh, hit directly on the soil ballistic missile. Yeah, but it took them like a lot of missiles to make one hit. So it's, but see, they won't tell you this because this is another organization news organization that don't like the Jews, so it's always going to be on the perspective against them. According to Tehran, uh, the air was hit uh, because of uh, Israel's war planes that hit Iran's uh, thing in Damascus. Now, here's another thing I want to throw in there before we get started here. Now, Iran's saying, okay, now, we hit you, and it were even. No, Israel used one bomb on the consulate. They used almost 2,000 bombs last night, okay? So, no, you're not even. So they're going to spin that one on you too. They say, okay, now that was just, uh, that was just getting payback for that one missile that hit that building. No, you fired a lot of missiles. Now you're going to get your butt handed to you. That's what's going to happen. Now it says, uh, Israel's air defenses have failed to intercept Iran missiles and drones. And see, that's also a lie. I don't know why that's there. That's a shame because that's coming out of war news. That's a bad article. It also reports of explosion in Raymond, uh, Jerusalem, and other areas, and that's also a lie, too. That did not happen. The place they hit was that Air Force base up there in the north. They pretty much brought down every other missile last night. 
the Iron Dome literally made everybody look really good last night when it comes to Israel. IDF sources confirm the strikes on Israel soil, but that's talking about the northern base. According to the U.S. officials, Iran fired about 70 missiles at Israel. A number of the missiles were fired alone. is about 150 they fired. I mean, there was a lot. Between that and the drones, it's like it kept coming. No one expected the Iran attack would be so extensive and so serious. All fell out of the West, with possible exceptions of the U.S. Nevertheless, uh, see... Uh, first with Hezbollah attack, which was a test, and then the Iranian strike against Israel uh, intercepts uh, interest on a ship or something like that. I don't know what that means. Tehran, Tehran says, we hit base of Israel's Air Force in uh, Negev. That's the one I'm talking about. The largest air base was hit successful by one missile. Images and data indicate that the base was seriously damaged. That's what came in last night. Says hell and Israel's airspace. According to the sources, Israel's intelligence maintained that the primary target of the wave was that Air Force base. The nuclear facilities in Damoma are are also nearby, but that's what they were aiming for. The ballistic missiles were launched from Iran guard bases in Afanan and different places. Israel's Iron Dome and Patriot aircraft systems were trying to shoot them down. I'll tell you this much: from what is coming out from intelligence. They shot down almost 98% of what Iran fired in there. And see, that's not what they're reporting there. They're reporting that Iran just ran them out just like Hal Turner did because these people don't like the Jews. We live in a time where Israel is hated around the world just like the Bible said. And all these news agents and everything are pretty much owned by Lucifer now. He pretty much controls all the information coming out. So we got to be very careful. That's why I said we're running out of news sources because so many of the news sources we have or anti-Jew. And even the church, a lot of the church is anti-Jew. I mean, it's it's scary what world we live in. And uh, there's just no words for it. But the Bible told us this would happen. And all we got to do is sit and look back and see that we're at the end of time because of this hatred towards the Jews. This happened exactly back in World War II, too. Same thing. It's just repeating itself. See, if there's anything else on here with that. See, the attack is complete. Iran says them once. Now, here's the thing I was telling you about that's almost laughable. Immediately after the latest wave of ballistic missiles was fired, Iran issued a statement. The Iran uh, Iranian delegation to the United Na Nations uh, invokes the right to self-defense. Justify Iran's attack on Israel. But see, Iran had already been attacking them before they hit the consulate. So they actually already started it. People kind of forget that while warning the U.S. not to get involved in the confrontation. Under Article 51 of the United Nations Charter, Iran's military action was in response to the Zionist regime attack to our diplomatic facilities in Damascus. Well, they've been using the, the facilities in Damascus to fire missiles into Israel before Israel hit them. Did anybody else forget that? However, if Israel's regime makes any other mistake, Iran's response will be much more severe. It better be compared to the first one because it was pretty bad. This is a confrontation between Iran and the criminal Israel regime of the U.S. that the U.S. must stay away from. Iran is trying to send a message that does not want further escalation. Oh, you already got that. You're in some trouble now. A well-informed source told the news agency that Iran would give a tougher response Oh, boy. God help them, so I can tell you. Because the next time, Israel's got missiles that will level Iran. This is These poor people, they're not the brightest tools in the shed. Israel can literally eliminate Iran off the planet Earth if they wanted to. Israel's the one saying, you know, we're giving you chance after chance, but these dum-dums keep coming, and they don't realize that one day Israel's going to get tired. The Bible says that, and Iran will no longer exist. This last war with Iran will be Iran's last with Israel. It's coming. It says Iran is trying to send a message that it does not want any further escalation. It's too late after they fired that many missiles. It's too late for that. A well-informed source said the news agency would give the tougher response if they, they come back on them. And I hate to tell you, but by tomorrow night, that's going to happen. Because they're going to definitely probably take out all their nuclear facilities and everything else. Now it says on here, 
surprise in the U.S. as Israel launched about 500 and Iran launched about 500 missiles. See, they all say different things. I don't know which one's the truth. The major saturation attack of Israel's air, air defense, like I said, they was trying to take out, see how many missiles it took to get the Iron Dome system. But so far, from what I watched, the Iron Dome system kicked Iran's hind ends with these missiles. It took almost every one of them out. Even Biden called Netanyahu and said, man, you just need to take the win because your system pretty much took out everything there. So that tells me that their missiles didn't do much. Now, they did hit that one base and they had damage. Besides that, there was a little bit of damage here, a little bit of damage there, but the Iron Dome system literally took down almost all this stuff. I mean, all the drones and how, all these missiles and the Iron Dome system took pretty much all of it out. But see, they're not going to tell you that on here because, like I said, they hate the Jews. We live in a world that just hates the Jews, just like Jesus said they would in the last days. Now, right there's your number, another number one sign that we're at the end. So far, Israel's military has detected more than 100 drones. It was way more than that. I think there's like three waves of them. They took them all out. Israel is being attacked from everywhere, from Iraq, Syria, South Lebanon, the Houthis. Like I said, they was coming from every direction. It wasn't just the ones coming from uh, Iran. They was being hit by everybody, and still the Iron Dome took almost everybody. I think they said it was like a 96 to 97 percent that it took down. That's unheard of of any system built by man. And i tell you one thing, it scared Iran to death. Once they figured out that that Iron Dome system was as that good, they took two ballistic missiles out that even was out of the Earth's atmosphere during this attack. No joke. God is on the side of Israel. These people, they keep on and keep on, but they're going to find out very soon. It ain't going to be too pretty. The Israel Air Force said it's monitoring the drones and preparing for additional waves of attacks. I think there was like two or three waves that came in. But like I said, God was on their side and he pretty much took everything out with them. As an uh, Israeli source said that many f friendly Arab countries had uh, have sent messages to Israel that they're ready to shoot down Iran drones and missiles fired at Israel. That was Saudi Arabia and Jordan did a good job of helping Israel out last night. American and British fighter jets based in Cyprus have begun to help intercept missiles. Drones, why uh, sources claim the United States is also involved in intercepting, interceptions, interceptions over Iraq and Syria. Now, this is where Hal Turner said that a Russian jet, for some reason, showed up in Iraq to shoot down one of our refuelers for our jets. There is nothing in the, anywhere in the news I can find that. So that's totally made up. Let's see. Senior Israeli Army officials said several bases have been evacuated. This was last night. Aircraft have taken off air defenses but put on high alert to intercept drones launched from western Iran and Iraq. Public shutters began to open to the northwest Israel city of Haifa and other uh, communities there in northern Israel. The Syrian Army has put air defenses around the capital of Damascus, which Israel did bomb Damascus last night after all this, after they was getting hit by missile launchers in Damascus. Jordan declared a state of emergency and emergency due to the ongoing Iranian attack on Israel. Now, Hezbollah and Bashir's forces launched multiple missiles at the Golden Heights simulate, uh, simultaneously with the drone attacks from Iran. See, they, they're all in bed together. But see, they blame Israel, of course. Israel started this. They're the ones who took out this building. But that's not the truth. Iran started this back with Hamas on the 10th or the, uh, the tenth month and the seventh day. They're the ones responsible for this. They started it. It's their proxies. But see, Iran's putting it by on them just like the rest of our press is. So our press is doing the same thing. It's always Israel's fault. No matter what happens, it's always Israel's fault. Have you noticed that? That's for a reason. Listen, Lucifer hates the Jews. He's tried to wipe them out quite a few times, and God stepped in. He will this time, too. So this time, the final battle is coming, where Jesus is going to kick Satan and all the non-believers and his cronies and put them in a place where they deserve to be. That's what's coming. Trust the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, and future died and was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. 
Trust the blood of Jesus. That's your way in, people. I see it all the time on TikTok. Everybody's making fun of people like us because they think their works are going to get in, but they're not going to be laughing very much longer because works ain't going to get you in, people. It's not going to happen. We've tried to tell them, but see, they don't know how to rightfully divide the Bible. They don't realize when Jesus was here, he was talking to the disciples and the Jews. So they literally still want to be under the law. And that's what Jesus came here to conquer was the law to get rid of it. He was trying to teach the Jews that the law will not work, but they still wouldn't. They still to this day, they refuse to believe it. Just like most people from church, they believe it's about them. It's about what they do down here. When you accept the blood of Jesus Christ, it's not inside gets clean. It's not out here. This out here is always going to be dirty. That's why it has to be left when, when the rapture happens. That's why they don't want to teach the rapture. See, the way they teach it is you're in bondage for the rest of your life. And that's why I talk to people all the time and they're just literally falling apart. They think that today they, they put a toothpick in the wrong place and they're going to hell. That's what these people teach it. That's called bondage. See, when you truly accept the gift of Jesus, you're set free. You don't have that bondage anymore. That's why I know what they teach is false. That's why. I used to be under that bondage with the way they teach. I never understood it because they don't teach you the true meaning of what Jesus did. He died for all sin, past and future. It's all gone. Wiped it off the earth. It's all on him. It's finished. He finished it. But the church says, no, Jesus didn't finish it. You got to finish it. That's what these people we call lovers of the law are, the ones that teach works. They believe they are better than Jesus, that it has to be them that gets themselves in, and that's not the way it goes. Even Jesus went as far as saying it's like a filthy rag, the way they're trying to do it. When you learn to rightfully divide the Bible, and you start to put dispensation there, the Bible becomes more clear in what Jesus was trying to tell us all. There's a reason why he got on the cross at that time with two thieves. And one thief accepted him. He wasn't baptized. He wasn't jumping around. He wasn't this or that. He just believed. Now people say, well, that's a poor, poor uh, thing for you to use. Why not? Why is that? Because Jesus did that for a reason. So you're saying Jesus did, just went on the cross just to go on. He don't do that. He never did. He did everything because he knew how it would be in these days. He knew. He knew what the last days was. That's why he kept warning us about it. Don't be deceived. You've got all these people telling you you got to do this and this and this and this and this to get into heaven. That's deceiving. The devil knows the Bible better than anybody on this earth. And he's used that to corrupt the church. And it has worked. Don't fall for the deception. He's took the rapture out and all this other stuff because he wants people to be in bondage. And most of the church teaches bondage. That's what they teach. They're like, oh, you're a heresy and everything. No, I just go by what Jesus said. Jesus said, all you have to do is believe on me. He didn't say anything else. When he got on the cross, that is when everything changed. Everything changed. That's when, then on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down for the disciples and into us. That's us. He comes into us. Once you're saved, do you trust the blood of Jesus, what he did, that he died for you and he died for me? He comes in and you're sealed. They'll tell you today you can lose your, you, can, you can't be sealed. I don't think anybody today knows the definition of sealed. Because definitely the church don't know what that definition is. Well, you can lose your salvation. Well, sealed means you can't. So either Jesus is lying or these people are lying. You got to make up your mind. That's why I tell you to read your Bible. Because we got people out here teaching you. And let me tell you how they do it. They go in and get 10 scriptures to make their one scripture the way they believe. That's not the way it works. And nine times out of 10, they'll use a scripture against you. They don't even understand and what the context of it was. But see, they've been taught that all their life and they believe that is the gospel. Instead of going to God about it, they decide that they're going to do it themselves. The problem is today, everybody believes they can do everything without God. The Jesus ain't important. It's got to be them. That's the way, because that's what the church teaches today. It's about you. It's not about Jesus. And that's disgusting. And it took me a long time to figure it out that this is going on. But it's the truth. Everybody, all these churches want to take Jesus out of the equation. 
Jesus is the equation. He's the one that died for me and you. There's nothing we can do to get in. We're always going to be sinners. Okay? You're always going to sin. You're always going to fail. You're always going to come up short. Jesus loves those who can admit that they're a sinner and they need him. That's when you truly have faith in him. And you can't lose it. Once you accept what he did, Holy Spirit comes in in you and you're sealed. You're not going to lose it. You're going to fail many multiple times. You're still going to be sealed. That's the word of God. Read it for yourself. Ephesians 1.13 People, quit listening to other people. These people will condemn you, keep putting Jesus on the cross over and over, but they're about to find out the hard way. That's not the way it goes. There is a lot of deception in the last days. A lot. Just be careful what you're listening to. That's why I tell you. Don't take my word for it and don't take Billy Bob down the road for it. You go to God and he'll show you. He won't mislead you. Okay? Always go to Jesus. I always tell everybody that. Because he's the one who led me to the rapture and everything else. I just asked. And he showed me. And I thank God he did. Because a lot of people out here are totally being deceived. And going down the wrong road. We don't want to see anybody left here. Okay? We do not. That's why we're doing this day in and day out. Because we know we have limited time. With what's happening with Israel and Iran. Nine times out of ten. Israel is going to hit them hard tomorrow night. And that's going to be another counter strike. Then eventually all these other Arab nations are going to get involved. Russia's already put their name in the hat. Saying if America comes into this. They'll attack America. And they've already said. If we do anything on Iran's territory. Russia will come to Iran's rescue. That's why Biden pretty much ran for the hills when he heard that and said, we're not, oh, we're not going to do anything against Iran. So that's all for it. Till Russia said that. It's called fear. That's the one bad thing about our government. They run for the hills every time somebody comes against them. Biden comes out and says, don't. Don't do anything. Well, Iran did, and America went and hid under their bed, of course. Not our soldiers, not our armed forces. They're not scared of nothing. But our government is petrified of their own shadow. And they definitely ain't going to help Israel. And that was proven last night. Now, we helped defend them. But when push comes to shove, after all that Iran did by sending all these missiles and drones, America decides after Russia threatened them to go hide under the closet or in the closet. So that's what happened. Now, we'll wait and see what happens. But I do believe this will trigger the whole world into a war. This right here is what is going to start it. We know we're in the time frame. There's something because we told you right around spring in this area, it's starting to go start going downhill. That's why the X was formed on April the 8th. God is telling us from this point on, it's only going to go downhill worse and worse. While everybody else is asleep, watching their TikToks and having their good old times, the world's going to come to an end. Like that. In the next couple of months, the rapture is going to happen somewhere. We don't know when or where or, where or what. But it's going to happen. This right here is an indicator of that. With what's happening with Israel and Iran. This is all leading to that point. That the rapture will happen. While everybody else is watching their HBO and having a good time. We'll disappear. They'll be down here clenching their, clenching their teeth. Crying, screaming for God to come back. But it's too late. But that is exactly what's coming next. Don't be those people. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's coming. Listen to me very clearly. Look at me. This is coming. The church will be raptured soon. These other people will be down here screaming, for, begging for Jesus to come back and get them, but it's going to be too late. Their kids and their children will be gone. They're going to blame it on everything but Jesus. The Jesus coming guys. They're going to blame it on UFOs, whatever. We don't know exactly how they're going to do it, but they've got a plan. And these people down here will be deceived because they're going to believe that plan because they'll believe anything other than Jesus Christ. Anything. They would believe in Teddy Ruxpin before they would Jesus. Seriously. That's where we're at today. Sad time, but a good time for us because we're getting ready to leave here. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another day, Lord. We see that the world is collapsing under our feet. 
I ask of you, Lord, to protect the watchmen and watch women around the world. It's on these social media networks. They're trying to get the word out that you're coming, Lord. Protect them and their families in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask of you to be with the Jews. These are very desperate times. We see Jacob's trouble. We know it's coming. We see it in the distance, but we see it brewing right under our feet. Be with the Jews in these dark times, Lord, ahead of them. In Jesus' name. It's be to watch over the hungry, the sick, and the homeless, Lord. Get them to where they need to be until the rapture so they can be set free, Lord. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Ask me, Lord, just to watch over the ones, Lord, each and every day. They come here to put their loved ones and their family members in the comments. I ask of you, Lord, to, that they will be saved before it's too late. In Jesus' name. Lord, just pray for the ones who come against the channel, the ones who come against us. That, Lord, that you'll lighten their hearts before the end of time. In Jesus' name. Because we know it's coming very soon. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for just being with us. Thank you for putting over our head, food on the table. Just taking care of us, Lord, and just letting us be awake during these dark times. Because we see all this stuff coming. We see it every moment. Lord Jesus, please come soon so we can go home. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming and getting us. We know you are. In Jesus' name I pray. And amen. Thank you for all your all support. Thank you for being here with the channel. Always being with us and helping us. Thank you for all the work you're doing out there in the public of letting everybody know that we're at the end. God bless each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.